Man, you just gotta think about the history of the Oklahoma City Thunder, bro. All right, I want you to just take a second and think about the teams that we've had in the past that we've had KD and Russ on it, and we've hit rough spots, right? Where last night, in, in the old Oklahoma City Thunder way, right? That I, I hate saying this because I don't want to disc Scotty Brooks or Coach Donovan or you know anybody else like that, but the old way last night and and the reason that it kind of brought flashbacks of the past was because when we see a team in the fourth quarter that goes on a 9-0 run and then takes the lead from us Mm -hmm. um in the past that's impacted us greatly to the point where we're almost not able to pull our heads out of our assets again i agree with that and what we watched last night and witnessed last night from coach d and the coaching staff and everybody else that was involved man that was the key they changed it all man and seeing was, how calm key, and collective we were. What was the key, do you think, to them doing that? All right. So first of all is we've watched Coach D throughout the, the course of the season call timeouts at different um, you know time periods, right? Mm-hmm. Weird substitutions, um, almost sporadic at times. But all this stuff is on purpose, straight up on purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, he needs to know when he takes a timeout, when the best time is to take a timeout, when the team goes on a 9-0 run, when the team does this, when the team does that. He does this to protect his team. You know, mm-hmm. um, last night we even saw a, a, a tactic that was brilliant by Coach D. Um, there was a call done, and uh, we thought it was a challenge by the Pelicans, right? Because the way it went, Coach D called timeout. He baited the Pelicans to challenge the call, baited them, and they didn't. But Coach D is thinking about this stuff, man. He's understanding that the game is won by out coaching another um, team. And by doing so, you're you're adding more possessions to your team. And and we watched it, watched it again last night, where we were having trouble with what defense, getting defensive boards. So what did Coach do? D do? Calls timeout, puts us in the zone. He shut that fucking shit down. Yeah. And we saw it again in the fourth quarter, where we come out, we are having trouble, we were doing well, then all of a sudden, boom! That was like a minute and a half or two minutes, and they went on a nine zero run. What does Coach D do? Brings in Shea. You know, cleans up the shit, changes the defense, keeps the offense driving downhill. Boom. We put them away with eight minutes, 11 seconds to go. It's all because of Coach D and, and, and setting every one of these guys up. And what he has and what he is giving them, the knowledge of the game. And it's like these players are absorbing everything. And it's beyond anything I've ever seen. It's like when Sam Presti was GM and everybody said, no, 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 no. A GM that has no basketball experience is crazy. (laughs) He'll never be successful because he doesn't understand the game. A GM with no basketball experience, who would that be? Hmm. Oh, I know. It would be the the GM that came from Emerson College, right, man? Which is Sam Presti. He played in college there, but I wouldn't call that a Division One school. I, I think it was I'm Division sorry. Three. The knowledge of the game, right? Right. No when NBA I say that, is professional level, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, professional like Division One. You know, you you've had a coach that was a, you know, elite coach teach you the game. You know, a prodigy essentially, like going to Duke and becoming a, a Duke assistant. You know, that's not what Sam had. <laughs> you know, he had a, you know Division Three, whatever, whatever it is you know, way of going about, went there and then went to the San Antonio Spurs and worked his way through that Mm -hmm. by seeing that. Right. And then seeing how coach, you know, or Sam Presti has, has pulled, pulled the, the, um, coaches from everywhere. Right. You got coach Degnot came from Florida and the coach Donovan staff, he pulled him out, put him in the G league, right. Coach bliss. He went to Rutgers university. I think it was someplace like that. I forget what it was. And he was there to scout somebody. And he saw Dave Bliss and he said, who is that coach? And they told him who, what, who it was. And he went back and he signed Coach Bliss to a contract for a coaching contract. Cameron Woods. And we could go down the list, guys. Yeah. Like, it's so next level of saying, these are the type of coaches that I need. These are the co- type of coaches I want helping this team. And that's why it's so important to see how Coach D is, is lining up with Sam. And Sam is lining up with Coach D. And they're both giving each other the knowledge that they need to be better. Whether it's saying Coach D saying, "Hey, listen, I need more of a long wing, with uh, you know longer arms because my my defense needs this, my offense needs this, you know, like I need this type of player 
And what is, what is Sam doing? Say, I got you, man. I'll go get those guys. But he's not addressing them through anything else but the draft. And that's what makes it so powerful is because we have 15 picks over the next five years. First round picks. You're telling me that there's got going to be at least, I don't know, three of them that are going to turn into lottery picks? Yeah. So with Coach Dagnall and Sam Presti, I think one thing I've, I've noticed is this idea that Coach Dagnall is keeping, he's keeping adjustments in his back pocket. Even if an adjustment like this last game was just like keeping our starters the same or playing with Dario Saric. And I feel like there's a premium right now for Sam Presti to provide Coach Dagnall with players who can give him that versatility. Mm -hmm. And Dario played huge minutes. Aaron Wiggins plays huge minutes. Isaiah Joe is a new type of threat off the bench for the Thunder. And I just feel like we're looking at it and we're like, yeah, this is strategic. Um, but also, Coach Dagnall knows the value of being able to make adjustments on top of adjustments on top of adjustments. And I think mm. sometimes we've seen coaches that, like, can make one adjustment per game or they can make, you know, an adjustment at halftime. They can make an adjustment going into the fourth quarter. Like coach Degnall has adjustments lined up mm. and he's ready to respond to any situation. It goes a lot back to the coaching staff, but it also goes back to the, the roster versatility and he pulls the adjustment card whenever he needs to. And he never is out of adjustment cards. I mean, in the end, until the final buzzer sounds, you know, at that he point, goes, you're out. He goes, Coach Bliss or Coach Cameron Woods or whoever says, I need this player to do this, right? Mm -hmm. And then he leaves and keeps on coaching, right? He lets the assistant coach coach them up to what they needed to do, go out there, and he gives them a couple minutes to do so. If they don't do it, then he goes to the next player. You know, that's what he's always done. And I think that's what's so powerful. Like, you know, like I said, people are like, oh, he's sporadic. Look, at he put this player in for three minutes. Well, he did put this player for two minutes. Well, Coach D put that player in to do a certain thing, and they didn't do that thing. That's all right. I got you, man. Don't worry. I won't put you in that situation again. Aaron Wiggins, get in the game. Isaiah Joe, get in the game. Like, he's given everybody opportunities, and that's why you're sitting in a spot and saying Lindy Waters is, is in a huge spot. You have Isaiah Joe, great. You know, Aaron Wiggins, he's earned that spot, man. He's earned that spot. Now, Dario, you know, like JRE, like all these guys, and depending on the games that we're playing, will be depending on what these guys play. It's fun, man. It is. And I'm looking forward to this next single elimination game and how we see which players step up. I feel like some players are going to feel like they can do a little bit more, and some players are going to feel like, you know, given the same opportunities, they'll do the same thing. Um, but th there will be different opportunities based on different matchups. But we can be pretty sure based on what we've seen is that we're going to continue to play together. We're going to continue to move the ball and we're going to find ways to get the defense off balance and attack the advantages. And that's fun. Yeah, it is, man. And I love how this team approaches games. Like uh, you would approach a river crossing, um, you know, something that is going really fast, um, not so much deep, but pretty fast is you interlock your arms, you know, you build off of that. You allow that you have a stable base and then you go and you allow what needs to happen to get across. You know, it's like you build off of that. You put your arms out, you build, you build, you build. This team has built a river crossing to the point where we're, in, we're able to cross an entire city. And I think what the Oklahoma City Thunder is doing is taking that, that Oklahoma City Thunder blue, that, that Oklahoma City mentality, and they're putting it in to the way they're playing, the way they're understanding the game, and they've created something that they can literally allow the entire city of Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, all the surrounding areas to allow them to cross the fucking river, put them on their backs and cross the river, man. That's what's so great about this is that we're no longer in that place that we're sitting there saying, oh, please, please. We just want one more win. We want one more win. No, because guess what? We've already had that one more win. This is bonus time. This is bonus time. It's it's enjoy the fucking ride. I said in the fourth quarter last night where we were live with everybody, I said, this is the moment that I just want to sit back and I want to enjoy the game. Because if we don't get another game this season, I just want to enjoy everything this team has done. Well, guess what? We got another game. And guess what? I'm going to do the whole game. I'm going to enjoy every moment because every moment is a moment that these guys have given us to be able to cheer for them. It's all in. Because that's what we believe is all in on this fucking team.